praise God, praise God, praise God. Yeah, that's my signature tune. Because God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be glorified. God is worthy to be honored. We thank God for you. We bless the name of the Lord for making it possible for you to join us today. The Lord is in the house. And the whole earth must keep silent before him so they can hear and so they can be blessed. Welcome. Welcome to each and every one of you to our broadcast for today. It promises to be a real good time. You're going to be mightily blessed in the presence of the Lord. Let me also welcome those who are here for the first time because I know week after week, we have new people joining us. Thank you so much for being part of this program today. And for those who are regular, without you, we wouldn't be here. We give God a praise for allowing you to join us week after week, after so many months, after so many weeks. You're going to be blessed today. I can assure you of that. I want to speak to you today about a man. Yes, we're going to talk about a man. He is referred to in the Bible as the old man. That's his name now, the old man. He's called by that name because of his age. He is a very, 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 very old man. We all have him around us. We need to learn how to deal with him so he will not deal with us. That's why my message today is titled, When the Old Man Manifests. Mm -hmm. If you're born again, you don't want to see the manifestation of the old man. It promises to be an eye-opener. Please call a friend, call a neighbor, and tell them to come join us because they're going to be blessed. So will you be blessed also. But as usual, before we go into the message, before we go into the sermon, here are my usual announcements inviting you, first of all, as usual, to my podcast, Bishop Etiola's podcast. And you can access this by downloading my podcast app on the Google Play Store. For those of you who use the Android phone, or you can listen directly on the Spreaker app, which can be downloaded for both the Android and the Apple phones. Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E -E or you can just type my name, on your search engine, just put Bishop Etiola, and I believe the first thing that will come up is my podcast. Click on it, and you are ready to listen. You'll be joining listeners from over 40 countries around the world that have downloaded over 50,000 episodes. In the last 12 months brought some change. I implore you all to please do us a favor. Send some links of the episodes to your friends. They will be glad they did. That was something somebody did last week. And I was really appreciative of that. Please tell somebody about the podcast so they can be blessed, even as you are being blessed. And don't forget also we are on YouTube. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and of course we're on TV. Yes, talking about TV, RBS TV 13 in the great country of Guyana. Guyana, I don't know what is going on in Guyana, but you are showing up strongly on the statistics of the podcast. We thank you. We appreciate what you're doing. RBS TV 13. We give God the glory for the owners. We give God the glory for those who walk there. We are right there on that station every Saturday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. local time. 
I keep saying I want to come to Guyana. I'm just holding off for this pandemic to be over. I spoke with someone in Guyana last week, and it was so nice to know that I'm speaking to someone on the ground. Now I want to be on the ground myself and just go around the city and do some work for God. RBS TV 13, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. Then we also thank God for Mercy and Truth TV in Jamaica. They put us on every Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 local time. And they beam to 23 Caribbean island countries. We are seen everywhere. And we see the response in our feedbacks. We're there also every Saturday, every Wednesday morning from 1.30 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. local time. And of course, every Saturday, like I said, from 2.30 to 3.30 local time. We're not done yet with Jamaica. I can't wait to come to Jamaica. A big thank you also to those who are watching us on Logic One TV channel 112 in the great country of Jamaica. Three times a week, we're on that station. And we're also there several times a week with my prayer program. You don't want to miss those prayer programs. We've got a good, 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 good feedback from Jamaica, and I believe it's from that station also. May God bless the owners. May God bless the workers. May God bless the work of your hands. May God increase you more and more and more is my prayer. Please don't forget to listen to us on our own radio station. Yes, Fresh Waves TV, Fresh Waves Radio. Yeah, we are on both, Fresh Waves TV, Fresh Waves Radio. But right now we are promoting the radio station more than the TV station because we are still doing some things on the TV station. But yes, Fresh Waves Radio, we are on 24-7. 24-7, yes, any time of the day or night you tune us in, we are there. On it, you can listen to a variety of programming that will surely bless your soul. Fresh Waves Radio. You can download the app on both the Android and the Apple phones from their respective app stores. Just type in Fresh Waves Radio. Install the app. Yes, you are good to go. Please help us spread the word because God is blessing people listening to this radio station. Let me close my announcements by reminding you that every Thursday night and every Friday night, 7 p.m. New York time, I'm live on Facebook. That is on my own personal Facebook page, Bishop A.O. Itiola. Uh, so many of you Tune us in and watch us and pray along with us and you are blessed. No question about it. You cannot pray those prayers and not feel the touch of God. That's every Friday night, every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Many people's lives have been touched and impacted by these prayers. We want you to be part of it. Like they say in the world, a trial will convince you. I'm almost tempted to say half. A trial will convince you is very addictive. Please join us this Thursday and this Friday and experience greatness at the throne of God's mercy. I think that's all the announcements I've got. Let's talk to God to help us today. Heavenly Father, we are here. We need you to help us today. Give me the anointing to speak and give your people the anointing to be blessed. In Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me begin my sermon today by telling you a true, true story. Many, many, many years ago, <clears throat> I pastored a church down south in Montgomery, Alabama. One of my members was a self-employed gentleman that sold used cars on the side. He walked in the store. Uh, he walked for a store. I've forgotten the name of the store now. But he also sold these cars on the side. And he made decent money, decent living 
from selling these automobiles and at a point he considered opening his own used car dealership. He was a very, very, very faithful man in my church. There was one thing that stood out about this gentleman and that was his love for God. I've been meeting many people that love God yet to meet one like him. It was a man that loved God fervently and wanted all that God had in mind for him. He prayed and fasted a lot. And one time I remember him going on a 40 day fast and one or two times he will feel like fading. I almost told him to stop the fast, but he pressed on and he finished the 40 day fast, no food. Guess what happened? I believe that fast really affected him positively even till this day, the impact is still in his life. If you ask me if I've ever found a fault in that man at that time, I would say no, absolutely not. He's a good man. And I can say for a fact, he's still a good man till today. He was careful to walk the straight and narrow way, walking in the fear of God and patiently waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. The time came for him to get married and he ended up marrying a woman of God also that complimented his seriousness for the Lord. I don't even know who, who is who out of the two of them that is more serious. I think it's the most beautiful compliment I've ever seen in Christian marriage for husband and wife to be on fire for God. I'm always grateful. The marriage did not destroy his testimony in Christ, rather it strengthened it. And I give God a praise for that. But one day, one day, one day, and if he's watching this program, he will remember what I'm about to talk about. One day, one day, the unthinkable happened. What was it? He came knocking on the door of the church where I was preparing for my Sunday sermon. His head was bowed, and there were tears in his eyes. So I offered him the seat in front of my desk, and he sat down, looking sober, and looking so dejected. So I asked him what the matter was. He looked up at me, I see, ashamed of himself. He looked down again and he said, Pastor, I blew it. I really blew it today. I asked him, I said, blew what? He said, Pastor, I never knew there were fragments of my past still left in me until I was put to test today. And you know what I did, Pastor? I failed God woefully. I said, what happened? He said, a lady came and bought a car from me and I disclosed every issue that the car had. That's after I've spent a lot of money fixing it up. He said his policy was to glorify Christ in his business without hiding anything from his customers. He said he even sold the car at a huge discount when he found out that the lady was a Christian lady. Of course, she paid him, drove the car away, and immediately used the money to pay the balance of his rent for that month. To his surprise, to his surprise, the lady came that afternoon accusing him of being a fraud. She said she was sold a lemon. You know what a lemon is? That's a bad automobile. Of course, she demanded her money back immediately and clearly made him know how dissatisfied and how disappointed she was with him. Unfortunately, the money she was demanding from him had gone to the landlord. He had no money to pay him high again. He said, Pastor, this is where my story is going. 
I don't know what came upon me that day, this afternoon rather. I reacted with a level of anger that I never knew was inside of me. I didn't know. I thought I was cleaned in and out by the blood of Jesus. But the anger that surfaced in me this afternoon, wow, I had to restrain myself from grabbing her and shaking sense into her or maybe shaking sense out of her. Then it dawned on him that, wow, this my behavior does not honor Christ. How you know when you do wrong? If you really love the Lord, the Spirit of God will not leave you alone. Conviction will come upon him, you. And he said the conviction was so strong. It's like he caught himself and he said, wait a minute. You're supposed to be representing Christ. This, your behavior, really misrepresents him. He said the lady stood speechless before him, totally speechless, in order shock seeing the way he reacted. Well, being a wise lady herself, she said two of us cannot be angry at the same time. So she left and she said, please, when you calm down, give me a call so we can sort things out. She left and then he left and came to me in my office. He said he felt so ashamed, he felt so embarrassed, and that was why he came. I still hear those words till today. Pastor, I didn't know. I still have the old anger left in me. Pastor, I didn't know the remnant of the old anger still dwelt in me. And that day, Pastor, it came out in full force. And I let down my master. I don't know, I still had such capacity inside of me. Well, we prayed together. And he left to go home, disappointed at himself. Well, the story I just told you forms the background to my admonition to you this morning. When the old man manifests, I don't know whether you're watching me in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening. Whenever you're watching, this word of God is perfect for any time of the day or night. When the old man shows up. Huh. When the old man manifests. When your vices conflict with your virtues, when the remnant of your past rears up its ugly head, when that which you thought was dead shows you that it has only faded and it comes alive, when the unkilled little foxes in your life Show how much damage they have done to your spiritual vine. When the termites in your life, ladies and gentlemen, eat up the woods that are holding up the timbers of your Christian life and leave you with an unstable Christian structure. What I just described about that, my friend and my church member, is a picture we find is displayed in many a people of God. And you know what it does? Hmm. It causes onlookers and even we ourselves to exclaim, What? And wonder that such old men, such former weaknesses, such former behaviors, still reside inside us. Today I'm going to take you into the scriptures. I'm going to show you some people 
that manifested the same thing and it brought so much dishonor to their testimony and to the glory of God in their lives. It just dishonored everything and turned their glory into grass. I think of some characters. Let me begin with Moses. You know who Moses was. If you don't know who Moses was, I'll read to you what the Bible says about him in Numbers chapter 12, beginning to read in verse number one. And Miriam and Aaron spoke. They spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken by us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the Bible says in verse 3 in parentheses or in commas, now the man Moses was very meek. That is the commentary of the Holy Ghost concerning Moses. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. That was what the Bible says about him. And you'll find that out. The Lord speaks suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come ye out three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And the Lord said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream, my servant, Moses, is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? Did you hear what God said about Moses? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then are ye not afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? Hey, this guy had high marks with God Almighty. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the glory cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly, Wherein we have seen, let her not be as one dead, of whom flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out to his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Can you believe that? This guy was, was number one. Look at the virtue in him. Beautiful virtue. Most people will not pray for Miriam. Most people will not pray for Aaron. Most people will say, well, you cause it. You ask for it. You got it. But Moses cried to God, just like the meek man that God described him to be. And he displayed this virtue again and again in the Bible. Look at in Numbers chapter 14. When the people spoke against him and Aaron, in verse 1, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night. And the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore had the Lord brought us out upon this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return unto Egypt. Look at this people, putting the virtue of meekness and love of Moses to test. Look at what happened in verse 5. They passed the test. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. They fell on their faces. <laughs> Most pastors today will fall on the people instead of falling on their faces. But these men fell on their faces to show their level of meekness and to display their level of humility, even without realizing that was what they were doing. 
You see a picture of great humility. You see a picture of great meekness. There you see a man whose passions were under control. But come with me. Come with me. The one that you just saw virtue in, vice, manifested itself one day. Numbers chapter 20 verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses, and unto Aaron, because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring the congregation unto the land which I have given them. He was the meekest man, meekest man, but he was brought to a place where he was tested and he manifested the trait and the quality of the old man. He lost it when the old man manifests. And you know what happened? God meant what he said. He never allowed him to see the promised land. He showed it to him. He said, you are so close, but you are not getting there. See, that's what your vices will do for you. And that's why I'm preaching this sermon. Deal with those things that you know are not glorifying God in your life because they will be blockages. They are more serious in blocking than witches and wizards. They are more powerful in blocking than curses and hexes. I'm telling you, deal with the vices that you see in you. Go back to the cross the second time and say, God, I thank you for the virtues that I see in me. But I also see some vices in me. Deliver me, rescue me, set me free. And he will be sure to do that. You know the same thing happened to David? Look at the testimony of God about David at the very beginning in the life of David. For Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, Saul, Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee, for now will the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now the kingdom shall not continue. Your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. Did you hear that? The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. It means that this man had some serious virtues serious characteristics and seriously good things about him for God to call him a man after his own heart. Because thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord, I found another man. Well, in Acts chapter 13, that same truth gets repeated. Verse 22, and when he had reproved him, he raised up upon them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony. God gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Wow. I wish he did not have vices in his life undealt with. Because a time came when he did not fulfill the will of God and fail God. I'm talking about the old man inside you. It will ruin your testimony. And you know what I love about God? God did not say, well, I once called him a man after my own heart. Let me hide everything wrong that he does after that. No, God revealed everything he did. Only God knows how surprised the angels must have been to see David, the man described as a man after God's own heart, 
months, maybe just a few years later, he descended so low to commit unspeakable sin against Bathsheba and against her husband. Look at what the prophet said to him when the prophet manifested in his palace. Second Samuel chapter 12. I'm reading in verse number 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city. The one was rich, the other was poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. And he did eat of his own meat, and drink of his own cup, and lay in his own bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take his own flock out of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. But he took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come unto him. And David's anger was kindled against the man and said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and I gave thee the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and if that had been too little, I will moreover have given you such and such things. Wherefore then hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? It's the old man, old man. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? The old man reared up his ugly head. It makes us do things that God himself said, but why did you do that? I didn't know you to be like this. This is not the you that I used to know. And you have taken his wife to be thy wife and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, David, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the high tight to be thy wife. Thus saith God, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. Wow! That was the man who was called a man after God's own heart, carrying out two missions that were far from God's own heart when the old man manifests, when our vices overtake our virtues, when the old man overpowers the new man, when the flesh takes control of the spirit, David, David, David who had several opportunities to kill Saul and he refused. And you look at him and say, wow, this man is really a man after God's own heart. This man is really a virtuous man. He should have been able to kill Saul without any problem, but he refused. He said, I'm not going to touch him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that same David? Can you imagine how tainted his record was? After promising, you remember Shimei? Shimei, the one that was throwing sand on him and cursing him after Absalom chased him out of town. 
Can you imagine the same man who promised that boy that he will not punish him? Look at this promise in 2 Samuel 19, 18. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And she made the son of Gera fell down before the king. And he was come over Jordan and he said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet the Lord the King. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? Look at the answer of David. David said, What have I to do with thee, ye sons of Zeruiah? that ye should this day be adversaries unto me. Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am king over all Israel? Therefore, look at this. The king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swear unto him, Thou shalt not die. And the king swear unto him. Well, that's a virtue. But come and see the vice. This same king who swore and promised she made that you're not going to die. Look at what he later did. He coached Solomon, his son, to make sure that he not only promised she made, punished she made, but that he killed him. Yeah. In other words, I was the one who promised that I will not kill him. I never promised him that my son will not kill him. Is that a virtue or a vice? Look at 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. And behold, thou hast with thee she made the son of Gera, a Benjamite of Behurim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Manhenam. But he came down to meet me, he came down, I came down to Jordan. And I swear to him by the Lord that I will not put him to death with the sword. Now look at the final instruction to his son. Now therefore hold him not guiltless. For thou art a wise man and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. But his whore head bring thou down to the grave with blood. Wow. David, David, I thought you're a virtuous man. David, I thought you're a man after God's own heart. Yes, he was, but now the old man manifested. But now the old hatred manifested. The unforgiving spirit manifested. You know what I'm trying to do today? Trying to make me examine myself and trying to make you examine yourself. Right? There are a lot of virtues about us, a lot of great things about us. But you know what is so sad? When the negative things manifest, it just spoils everything. You know, I'm reminded of the double standard of the lives of the people in the Corinthian church also. Very, very true of church people today. You cannot but be reminded of the Corinthian church's fervency for the things of the Spirit. That was a church that was filled with the Holy Ghost. That was a church that manifested all the gifts of the Spirit without any exception. And yet, they were the most unruly group of people. Ruled and controlled by the flesh and by their animal nature. People, the earlier we take ourselves back to the cross, the second time, the better for us. Not for salvation. We're already saved. But we we'll go back to him for deep cleansing. So that we are not only free, but we are free indeed. There are things, ladies and gentlemen, that manifest in us. 
that those who are too close to us know very well and they see that disgrace and the taint in our testimony for Jesus Christ. Our virtues are great, don't get me wrong, but our vices erode them so badly. They did for Moses. They did for David. They did for the Corinthian church. You see, such mixture was what manifested in Peter, not days, not weeks, not even months apart, but mere hours apart, maybe even mere minutes apart. This, this is amazing. Look at the troubling passage, ladies and gentlemen, in Matthew chapter 16, reading there in verse number 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, that's unto Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. This man was so virtuous he had revelations. This man was so virtuous God in heaven revealed things that he did not even re reveal to other people. He revealed them to him. And I say unto you, Look at verse 13, verse 18 of Matthew chapter 16. I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Wow. And whatsoever, Peter, thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Can you hear the angels clapping and say, Wow, how highly favored this old man Peter is. What greater commendation can be given to a child of God than what was given to Simon Peter here? Jesus looked at him with joy. Jesus looked at him with surprise. Jesus looked at him with exclamation. And Jesus said, Ah, you are Peter. You deserve the key to the kingdom. Yes, you do. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose, here on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I can see Peter saying, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I thank you. I can see his friends also rejoicing and say, way to go, Peter. Way to go, Peter. And I can see his enemies, oh, they just couldn't stand it. That this guy got so much glory and so much blessing from the Lord. Virtuous guy. But hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because... When you jump from verse 18 and verse 19, all right, and you jump to verse 21, same day, maybe, even same hour. Look at what the Bible says. From that time forth began Jesus to show forth his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and be raised again the third day. What happened? Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. He rebuked God. <laughs> this guy, he rebuked God, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Wow, this guy got mouth. But Jesus Christ turned and said unto Peter, the same one that he said unto a few minutes ago, that thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. Here is the key to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He said that to him maybe 10 minutes ago. But this time now, he turned around and said unto Peter, 
Get thee behind me, Satan. What? Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of man. Wow. The same one. Listen, people. When the old man manifests, the same one that said, Peter, 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 you are a rock. Peter, take it. Here is the key to the kingdom. The same one said to him now, Peter, Peter, you are Satan. Wow. Hired by him to destroy the kingdom vision. Get thee behind me, Satan. In other words, in other words, Peter was not himself again. The rock had now manifested the qualities of the sand or maybe the qualities of the clay. The one that was given the, king, the key to the kingdom has manifested it does not even have the key to govern his own life's kingdom. What a contradiction. You know what is so sad is like, that many of us are just like this man Peter. One minute our virtues are so beautiful. One minute the things will manifest are so glorious. And then the next minute, when we display, you know what I mean by display? When we display our thing and people say, what? Was that the pastor? Is that the bishop talking like that? Is that the bishop behaving like that? And those who know the pastor, those who know the evangelist and the bishop will say, oh, that's him, that's him, that's him. That's how he really is. But he's been able to keep it under control in the public. But now somehow he has, he has manifested it for all of you to see. The virtue got swallowed by the vice. And Jesus Christ will not hide anything. Jesus Christ not a respecter of persons. He called him the owner of the key to the kingdom. He called him the rock. But the next moment he behaved the exact opposite of that. He called him Satan. Peter, the rock. Peter, the messenger of Satan. You know what is so unfortunate? Critics of our walk, listen to Bishop, critics of our walk only measure us by our failures. Did you hear that? That's why the prophet said to David, he said, by this your action, the people who don't believe are going to have things to say against God. You're a good man. We've always known you to be a man after God's own heart. But this vice, this, this foolishness that you did is going to make people speak against the God of heaven. And that's exactly what is happening till today. Our vices, all right, our critics look at them and only measure us by our failures. But there's something even more unfortunate. Even more unfortunate is the fact that our vices are more visible than our virtues. Did you hear what I said? The wrongs we do are more visible than the rights that we do. And people use them to judge our real characters. When we stumble and fall into our vices, the old vices, the old man, people see that quicker than they see when we are walking the straight and the narrow road. I want you to look at yourself today. Maybe you need to take yourself back to the cross. You know yourself. I know myself. 
What are the things in your life that you yourself will look at yourself and say, this is not right. This my behavior does not glorify Christ. This way I act, this way I think, this way I walk. It's not good. People that know me differently will see this action and wonder if I ever knew Christ. But you know what I thank God for this day as I round up? I thank God that man may reckon us by our vices. But the one who really matters, who is God Almighty, the one who really matters, who is Jesus Christ, still has hope in you like he did for Peter. Mm -hmm. He never threw Peter away. Even after he linked him with Satan. Go and read the next chapter to that Matthew chapter 16. He never threw him out. You know what he did? He even took him to the Mount of Transfiguration with him and the others that went up to that mountain with him. If, I, if it were me, I'm not, I'm not taking anyone I call Satan. I'm a deliverance minister. If I ever call you Satan, wow, I'll deal with you at arm's length. But not Jesus. Jesus looked beyond his present vices and said, he's still going to be a rock one day. Jesus looked behind his present failures and he said, he's going to hold the key of the kingdom. Jesus looked beyond the gospels into the acts of the apostles and he knew what this man will become after he delivers him completely from the vices in his life. My friend, he never threw him out. Even after he caught him, denying ever knowing him. You remember? When Jesus told him, you're going to deny me thrice before the cock even grows. And he said, no, I'll never deny you. And he said, I will never deny you. Well, you know the story he did. And he did in a big way. Do you know that? Even though he said, oh, Satan. Even though he caught him lying. Even though he caught him cursing. God. Still looked at him and said, you, 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 this boy, you will be free one day and you will be Peter indeed and you will lead my church. And that was who Peter ended up becoming. Can I ask you as I close today, what are your vices? Seriously. May I ask you also, what are your virtues? You got them. Plentiful supply. Your vices? Your virtues. Don't buy the devil's lie that they will forever coexist until Christ comes. Don't buy that lie. Don't listen to the theologians who say that foolishness because then it makes you relax and not fight against them and not stand against them. Well, it's true. The spirit fights against the flesh and the flesh fights against the spirit, but you will cast the dividing vote the deciding vote. Why don't you vote for virtue? Why don't you vote for holiness? Why don't you vote for righteousness? Why don't you stand up against the vices that are present in your life? And you know them. Fast. I talked about fasting last week. I talked about fasting week before last. Fast and pray against the vices in your life. And you know what God would do? God will not leave you alone but touch you the second time till your life in all areas show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Won't you let God take absolute control of your life? Won't you let him purge you and remove all these things that are bringing dishonor to his name? He can do it for you right now. He can do it for you today. He can do it for you before we finish praying. If you will cry to him and say, Lord Jesus, purge me. Lord Jesus, cleanse me. Lord Jesus, sanctify me. 
Remove all these vices that are destroying all the uh, all the virtues that are in me, all the anger that manifests, all the pride, all the jealousy, all the lust, whatever it is that are taking control of my life. Break them and remove them from my life and remove me and fashion me after the image of your great dear son. And you know what God will do? He will do it for you. Because it says, anyone that comes unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Not only the sinner that is full of sin, but also the saint that is full of all kinds of vices that do not glorify him. Can I pray for you as we go off the air? Father God, I pray for myself. And I pray for all my friends that are watching me right now. I pray that anyone with any vice or with any vices in his life, the blood of Jesus will cleanse and remove and purge and purify and make them who they ought to be in you. Destroy the termites, O oh Lord, and give us a building that is worthy of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. I hope you will do something about it. When the old man manifests, may God give you the victory in every area of your life. Until next time when we come your way again, Bishop saying, stay sanctified and stay purified. Amen. Bye-bye.